friends, I left you with a question earlier. Who has the calm to dictate what is truth? It was Socrates, I believe, who said his wisdom was in knowing what he did not know. And what man knows what you do not know more than the master of the RPG? Heathen dogs, RPGs, maximize your Rift's character. Thank you very much. It doesn't uh, say RPG Garthon. fundamentals. That confused me. Well, it's it's covered. All right. It's it's, covered. That's, a, that's a that's a heck of a clicky title there. Yeah, yeah. Max Liao is is uh, practicing practicing uh, clickbait, clickbait sorcery clickbait titles yeah that's what it is but that's the this is exactly what this is about i i chose riffs because it's uh like like i said before uh riffs is known by many to be just cookie cutter type stuff you're a juicer you're you're basically the same as every other juicer on the board of your level same thing for a cyborg same thing for a crazy same thing for a ley line walker a mind melter whatever up, up until you pick your spells or sonic powers, they are the same as everybody else. That's not and true. And you're probably going to pick the same powers as everyone else because those are the best ones. At least half, yeah. That, that, yeah. I get it. I get it. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to why that's not true. But first, oh my gosh, it's totally in my face. <laughs> it's extreme. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's let's go into the sp the particulars of the Rift system. Uh, publication date: first edition came out in 1990. Pike of Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Tokens The uh, ultimate edition, which is what I'll be working off of, came out in 2005. The ultimate edition uh, of Rifts was very good. Yes. Uh, publisher Palladium Books. Uh, the core book you can get for uh, on PDF for twenty dollars. On eBay, you can get a physical copy that is gently used or like new. Uh, for thirty dollars, you want to get a brand new book. You go to the Palladium website, and you can get that for just under forty-two dollars. Palladium would appreciate you going to their website and buying a new book. Yes, they would. I, I have no doubt. Just saying, it's true. That never stops right. me from buying anything used. I don't care how much they'd no. appreciate it. Yeah. And they're they're not sponsoring this this episode. No, if they were sponsoring, I would tell you, you they you're, should. If they were, you'd be a sinner, a horrible, horrible being for going to eBay I would instead be a of buying sellout. a book. But, That'll be a super sellout, and I could live with that. Yeah, depending, depending. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, what do you start with? You like always in the game, you start by rolling attributes. Now, if you play by the book, this doesn't give you a lot of options because playing by the book means you roll three d six. You go from top to bottom, from IQ, all the way down to speed, one at a time, all in order, no variation. You roll what you roll, whatever whatever OCC uh, class or RCC race that that uh, that you can get that's your choices because there are minimums for many yep. most Which, game masters don't don't do that most right because game masters... well that's because when most people are starting a game they like i want to play x and then if you roll yes. oh well you can't now oh and then you're all sad you don't want to play yeah exactly so that's why most game masters don't some allow 4d6 drop the lowest and well, no. If uh, you allow forty six, drop the lowest. Unless the the uh, top three equals sixteen, seventeen, or eighteen, then you count the other one. Hmm. They allow that. Okay, great. I mean, it's it, it doesn't really give you a mathematical advantage, but well, no, it does because you have an extra die to to wiggle around, so it gives you some advantage. But m some do that. Most allow stat placement, which means you roll the you roll the number of stats that there are stats, and then you get to pick and choose where they where the numbers go most game masters do that okay now if you're in this camp the most game master then if your stat placement is allowed and you can choose your class beforehand this is the way you can make some great moves right out of the gate to help your character be more uh i don't know diverse and useful all right so uh what what, what are those moves you're talking about we're, we're not going to min max all right we're not going to do that as a matter of fact as a man at arms uh as an example, MD, in an MDC world, in a world of mega damage, if you're not supernaturally strong, your physical strength doesn't mean a whole lot. Not in a fight. It doesn't mean a whole lot. You don't need a whole lot of strength. I think to, to especially a cyborg, because they don't even have physical attributes, you got to buy them. Yeah, so, that's true, yeah. Yeah, you, it doesn't matter. You're just going to lose whatever you put in there anyway, so whatever. But even for like a, a Merc or a, or a Crazy or a Juicer, it doesn't really matter 
that much you meet the minimal requirement the rest of it's going to take care of itself either through special ability of the juice or crazy or through skills later on with skill there's a lot of skills that increase physical stats so you can start off a little weak and end up swole like you want to be you know it's fine you want to look swole then fine yeah get some skills to to swell yourself up yeah but instead of concentrating on these physical stats try the other ones try mental affinity it has that trust intimidate role now mental affinity mental affinity and physical beauty these are two very special stats because if you look at the attribute bonus chart under mental mental affinity if you have a 16 it's 40 percent trust or intimidate now this isn't a straight roll this is a bonus to whatever skill you're using that this falls under a bonus which is nice which is phenomenal especially at first level for example intimidate is a skill starts off at around 20 25 percent at first level which means you suck at intimidation at first level it's oh, understandable yeah. your first level yeah I get you're it. not that intimidating exactly but with even a mental affinity of 16 that 25 is now a 65 now you got some rolls to make now you you got some you got some people crying in there crying their beer and pee in their pants that's what you're doing and uh for physical beauty uh charm and impress uh th- theater uh putting on a, an, an instrumental show singing dancing uh seduction uh public speaking all of these are skills and all of this 30 percent, 35 40 from 16 on up is a bonus on top of the of the skill roll so you can get these skills which are normally almost worthless really especially at first level because singing is like 30 percent, you know seduction's 20 maybe 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 25 but i think it's i think it's more like 20 but with a high physical beauty or a high mental affinity you can make these very useful right away very true and, very true yeah there is dozens of skills that are affected by um, mental affinity and physical beauty that you wouldn't have even thought of before because you've never had an ma or a pb that was high enough to do this you never thought about it i get yeah. it you know you're you're a merc you know you, you got other you got other stats to worry about well give 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 some love to one of these and you're doing fine now iq of course is a no-brainer and i understand what happened there but uh, uh, if your IQ is 16 or higher, you get a one-time bonus when you get a skill of a certain percentage right on the top. Boom. Added right away. So when you start out, every single skill at the end of your character creation gets a bump. That ends up being a lot because you get a lot of skills in this Oh, game. yeah, you do. Right, right, right from jump, you get a lot of skills. Getting 2% to all of them, you're getting a total of something like 150%. If you add them all up, it's a yeah, lot it's of a skills. Huge bonus. So, yeah, so it's really, really worth it. Even a 16, really worth it because it's spread out everywhere. Now, let's move it. Let's pivot from attributes and let, let's go to your, your uh, occupational character class or racial character class choices. All right. Now, you can have too much of a good thing. Everyone knows this. For example, in your team, already there's two glitter boys and two juicers. Well, you got combat covered, man. I mean, a lot. Oh yeah, you got combat covered a lot. You have the glitter boys, which which can take on uh, uh, APCs and and siege level stuff all the way down to medium power armor, and then you have the the juicers to keep them clear of the riffraff, so no one's you know sniping at their legs. But frankly, juicers can take on the big stuff too, if you have exactly. Oh well, yeah, true enough. But you know the the glitter boy will do it better with their little boom boom gun. Now you don't need another man at arms class. You don't need another fighter. But those glitter boys need an operator. And uh, you are seriously deficient in magic and, and, and psychic backup. Seriously. A couple of, couple of lane line walkers and a shifters will tear you up. Because you have no magical offense or defense. What, what about a cyanite? Well, that's next. Let's say you have two shifters and a techno wizard. Well, you are magic heavy. And uh, in a firefight, you're not doing too well. So you might want to make a merc or a cyber knight or a headhunter, someone someone to handle the more mundane stuff. I'd recommend a cyber knight because they're they're a wonderful mixture of uh, of of psionic powers that are used in a very creative way, and just 
plain old uh, butt kicking. Yep, that's true. That's what they do. But some people don't like playing the riffs equivalent of a paladin. I get it. I understand. So a merc soldier, a headhunter, they have they have great overall uh, skill diversity, but they can hold their own in a fight at first level just almost as well as a juicer or a glitter boy or not maybe not glitter boy but you know a juicer or a crazy or whatever let's say you have a juicer you have a mind melter and you have a mystic you have you have straight up normal combat you have mental powers and you have magic and psionic ability got like you you are you are pretty diverse right yeah you are pretty diverse for combat again combat but every time you're not out of you're you're not in combat you have some skill holes. You can fill those with a rogue scholar or a crazy. A crazy is a general. He can fit. He, he can fit his round peg into a square hole because he'll just beat it in. All right, he can fit anywhere. But a rogue scholar, amazing skill selection. And I'm, I'm going to get through the skills in a second. But the, these guys will fill all of your non-combat needs, all of them. So if you're a combat-heavy group. You need a non-combat uh, support role, and a rogue scholar is is one of the adventurer classes that is the ticket. All right. Now, speaking of the skills, skills are key in your in your diversity. Look at that! I made it rhyme. It was really bad rhyme. I'm very anyway, proud of you. Thank you. You got to think outside the box on this one because everyone else who has the cookie cutter program is thinking in that box, and they're just going to make the same thing over and over again. You get skills for yourself. Literacy. Almost no one in the co- in the in the what was once the lower forty-eight can friggin' read. If you can read, you can you can get free room and board in a small village just by reading them their holy book, or you know reading Grimm's fairy tales to them. They will it will be like a yearly celebration of them. <laughs> because they, no one can read. No, seriously, this is true. Yeah, you, in some you, of the places, yeah. Yeah, this is great. Computer operation. Now, normally, under normal circumstances, normal, non-stressful circumstances, you can just use basic computer stuff. Right. You know, you can just, you know, type into Google and say, oh, I'm doing this. I want to, where, where is my local Chili's? And Google will tell you, you know. But in a stressful situation, when you're really hungry or someone's got a gun to your back, you, you try and use a computer without computer operation and you're, you're, you're typing in searches into Facebook, like grandma, you know, and it easily just gets out of hand and you fail at something completely simple because you're under pressure and the GM says, no, you got to roll. I don't have the skill. Well, then you fail. <laughs> Suck it, Joe. You know, it's so, not an operating yeah. system you're familiar with. You're hosed. There you go. And hunting and fishing. People don't get this. Uh, this cannot be overstated. You cannot go hunting with a mega damage weapon. No. Well, I'm going to get to that I mean, in, in equipment. I'm going to get to that in equipment. <laughs> Don't worry. I did not forget that. But hunting and fishing, this uh, what I'm about to say cannot be overstated. Most of Rift's world is wilderness. Mm-hmm. At any given point, you can be 100 miles from the nearest equivalent of a 7-Eleven. You are going to run out of food that you brought with you. If you cannot hunt and you cannot fish, no one in your party has this ability, then someone's going to die. I don't know if it's going to be by starvation or Donner Party or whatever, but someone's going to die. All right, now, skills for your group. Demolitions. I chose demolitions because this one is very special. Demolition skill allows you to place and hide and properly implement explosions boom okay great you can you can plant explosives as traps you can plant explosives on Mm. things you can do all that good stuff that's another tool in your belt great but there's a secondary uh part of this skill if you read it it says you now have the ability to spot other people's hidden demolitions traps Ooh, that's useful Yes, it's very useful. They do have a detect traps slash mines skill. But it starts at 20%. But it gives you a plus 50% if you're using a device that assists you in finding mines or traps. And I looked through the entire book, the entire ultimate book. I'm sure there's no device that says it's for that. There is no device that says it's for that. So the skill is basically useless. But... 
the demolition skill, you roll the demolition skill, which starts at 60%. There you go. Very nice. Not only can you plant these bombs, but you can find bombs that other people have planted. L look for the skills that have dual purposes like this. There are some in there. Like archaeology and anthropology. Archaeology, the, the, the study of ancient artifacts, stuff like that, and ancient peoples that are no longer alive. And anthropology is the study of, of peoples that are currently there. They're there, and you're studying them as they live. Now, uh, you're like, why do I care about this? Why do I care about this nonsense? Because each one of those has a secondary skill inside it that allows you to recognize the value of pre-rips items. Now, this is very important because, like I said, you at any point you could be 100 miles from somewhere. All you have is this little podunk village, and they don't deal in credits. They don't care about credits. They're fighting for survival. Very true. So they they deal in barter. They deal in trade. And if and if you can de you can determine what is valuable and what is not, you're a leg up. These skills allow you to do that. Plus, anthropology will allow you to to uh, uh, interact with with uh, with with strange beings or different cultures much more easily without offending them and getting yourself run out of town, which has happened to me on more than one occasion. And he's not that, talking about in game. He's actually talking about. You. Oh, that's that's good. That's good. <laughs> now I put this in here for skills. I don't know be, be, because I had to put it somewhere. I want to put it here. Glitter boy operators, the class, have one love in life. They love. They have one love. They they are the they are the sailors that 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 uh, uh, can't be away from the sea, but this makes them come back to shore every time. That's the OCC called the operator. Well, someone has to fix their stuff. Exactly. It's it's strange to me that a glitter boy operator, they're called operator. This is why they're called operator. Does not have the ability to repair power armor. No, which is a pilot can't primary. fix a plane. They can't fix the thing that they re they require to do their job. An well, operator can, and he can do it real well. An operator can, but then most people can't fix the things required to do their jobs. That's true, but this is Rift's world where this is Wild Wild West. If you can't do it yourself and you don't have someone to do it for you, then it's just not getting done. That's true. Yeah. So a glitter boy can't do it. He's got to get someone to do it for him, and that's the operator. All right. Now, speaking of equipment, this is where you can blow it. Don't blow it. Okay. The easy stuff. This is the stuff that no one forgets. Ammo and or power packs. Food and water. Bullets and beans, people. Bullets and beans. No one forgets the bullets and beans. Usually. And fuel, and usually. And fuel for your ride. Whatever it uses. Does it use gas? Does it use giant power cells? Does it use a nuclear battery? Whatever. I don't know. Fusion core. Whatever. I don't know. But they never forget these things. No one ever forgets this stuff. That's the first thing they're thinking about. Some people forget important stuff that is not about combat, like local maps. They have them. Cartography has not gone extinct, and maps are very important because old maps, pre-rips maps, don't work anymore because the Earth has changed so much. Yep. So you have to buy and use local maps to get around. I have land navigation at 98%. Great. Do you have a map and a compass? Well, no. Then it's worthless. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. Good Inside a compass, you, you can't map. even accurately draw your own map. No. No, you can't. Tradable goods, like I said earlier. You know, not everyone uses credits. If you're outside a big city, credits are worthless. Absolutely worthless. You have to deal in tradable goods. Like, uh, you know, uh, MREs are really good for, for a lot of people because they last forever. And, you know, the, these small farms out there may have a bad wind, may have a bad summer, a bad harvest, and they just need some more food to get by. They'll, they'll take that all day. Or maybe you it's know? a food they can't get locally. There you go. Or uh, books on, on how to learn how to read. ABC's Made Simple. That'll get you a lot. Village Elder wants to know how to read. Okay, teach them how to read. That'll give you good stuff. Pots and pans, man. Pots and pans. People forget pots and pans. I have hunting. I have fishing. Great. What are you going to cook it on, dummy? Get a ring of rocks and a stick. Every meal. Go. Every meal is meat on a stick. There you go. And every, every time you eat, the Game Master will roll. Did he get a disease? Oh, burn the disease out of the meat. <laughs> there you go. So pots and pans, people. Pots and, and a radio. 
You have no idea how useful a radio is. Just a friggin' radio. Just every once in a while, just tune around. You'll, you'll pick up stray transmissions. If you get coded transmissions, well, then you're in trouble. Somewhere they're, they're still they're, playing Hotel California. They'll never escape that song. There you go. Yeah, probably. But, uh, you know, coded transmissions usually means there there's, there's a military contingent around you within radio range of you. And radio range in Rifts, in Rifts Earth is like 10, 15, 20 miles an hour. Uh, come on, 20 miles uh, radius. So it's close. And that could be dangerous may, for you. That could be very dangerous for you. So you want to skedaddle. All right, radio, very important. And these are the things that everyone forgets. Fishing line with hooks. No, I don't nice. understand why. He took the fishing skill, but he didn't take fishing line. What are you going to fish with, dummy? That's a uh, that's actually in the book. It's in the book. Oh. Fishing line is in the book. <laughs> so it's important to fish with. Flashlight. Yeah. Flashlights are good. Flashlights fine, but I got a flashlight on my power armor. Yes, but you can't wear power armor everywhere. You can't. I'm sorry. You want to. Power armor is bad for fishing and hunting. It's bad for fishing, and, and it's it's bad for going into a local village. They're going to think you're there to rob them. Because, because everyone else who shows up in power else, armor. Exactly. Is, is everyone else who shows up in power armor is there to rob them. So um, unless you want to scare the locals away, you know, just don't wear your power armor. And when it gets dark, you're going to need a flashlight. You, you want to look under under a rock, you need a flashlight. You know, this is what happens. Flashlights are extremely useful. All right. And a video camera. My God, man. A video camera. He's like, what am I going to use a video camera for? You're going to record things, important things, so you don't forget. You can, uh, uh, you, you go to a puzzle. You, you have the classic puzzle thing. You're recording, solving the puzzle. And the, the, and the game master's like, well, you didn't write anything down. No, I recorded it. Look, we can watch. We can watch what happened. All the, all the permutations we tried, we can watch and do different ones. Or uh, someone, someone is telling you how to get to somewhere. Or codes to put into a computer when, once you infiltrate the facility. You record that stuff, man. Why not? Do it. It's great. They have versatility everywhere. Plus, uh, these, these local villages, if, if you, say, pop a couple of vids in there, you can get that room and board paid for. Oh, yeah. Just show a movie. Show a movie to the village. You can do it. You can find a DVD of Splash 2 somewhere and just impress everyone. Exactly, right? Just impress the heck out of everybody. All right, so th those are the ways that you can change your character, give them more utility. Now, there's plenty more. There's plenty more ways. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I could have gone through every skill that had a that had a secondary function. But now that you know that they're there, you can look for them. Absolutely. There's a list of all the common equipment. I went through some of them that have that have utility outside of combat that you're going to like. There's a whole list. Now you're looking the right way. You've aligned your brain to look for these things. What's useful out of combat? You have a lot of secondary skills, especially if you're an adventurer type and not a man at arms or, or a psychic or a mage. You have a lot of general skills you can take. Now you're aligned your thinking to take advantage of not just combat, but out of combat. And of course, I taught you that the attribute, mental affinity, and physical beauty are supremely important when you're not firing bullets. They they hook up with so many skills and make them so much better. It can it can be the difference between a useless skill and, and a skill you can't live without. And there we go. Very nice. Thank you, Heathen Dog. You are welcome. Now what are your go you you that's always this is still you. Oh, there you go. Uh what'd you think of the segment? Uh did you like it? Did you think it sucked? Throw it in chat. Throw it in comments below. What are your thoughts on the character creation process for Rips? I mean, do you think it was cookie cutter? What do you think now? All right. And do you have any suggestions for future RPGs? I think I've got one already written down from, from last week, but uh, I will put it on the list, and I will do that one as well. Absolutely. Thank you, Heathen Dog. Those are some pretty welcome. interesting ideas of how to, like, things to consider when making your Rips characters or any, actually, in some ways, a lot of games. Well, things to take with you, especially postmodern. Should I entertain folks in the village with a banjo skill? You know? I'm sure they'd appreciate some banjo skills. And Why not take a musical 
with physical beauty, you can entertain and make money. You can literally make make money for food, water, and bullets by singing to a tavern. That's right, because just like now, you don't need skill to be a pop star. You looks looks pretty much account for everything. Nah, that was cold. That's true. It's true. It's though. absolutely true. It's Wait. the it's the era of auto tune. Yep. Don't miss an episode. Follow on Twitch with notifications and subscribe. You go to follow. Like, hey, follow is pretty good. And you get notified. See us channels like Tears clearly go live. But you know what else you can do? Subscribe! Oh my gosh, and things are so much better for you. And then you can also go YouTube subscriber by running, running, running. And the lightning bolt strike. And lo, you are knowledgeable about when the videos are uploaded to YouTube so you can see your favorite segments from the Legion of Myth. You're seeing Millie Finley was 30 years before their time. Sort of, yeah. 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 <laughs> They'd be a lot I mean, more accepted now. It's true. It's true. Yeah, because the, the, there's been so many slips of, of so many high-level pop stars that, oh, there's a there's a technical malfunction and their real voice comes through and it's awful. Yeah, M- Millie Vanilli would not have been ruined. Like Nowadays, they were... it would just be, oh, that's okay. That's just their backup singers way yeah. in the back yep. singing for go. them. And they were like, okay, that's right. <laughs> And you should get more Heathen Dogway. You can find him on YouTube. Find his segments, anime RPG segments, team ups, and everyone are in Star Trek Online with that Garthon cat and Algarian. His past streams, look him up on YouTube, very entertaining stuff. You can even watch him cry when he gets destroyed. Well, not cry. He never actually cries. But you can I, see I pieces of his soul get destroyed. Get and upset. his current soul destroying activity is Pacify, which he yeah. streams Mondays on Twitch. Oh, uh, Algarian bought the game. It's only $5. Elgarian bought the game and he's going to help me out because I've played four, five, ten. I played 15 times and I haven't come. Well, I no, no, close is relative term. I haven't even come close to winning. So he's going to help yep. me. Doug says my character would be the ugliest sin, but banjo skills would melt a demon's heart. He has only one response to any problem and it's probably not long for this world. The Raiders have come. Don't worry. I have my banjo. <laughs> <laughs> hit him with the head with it but algarian's right uh there's room for two more people so if i can't do fingers right two more people if you uh if you want to if you want to come with us uh algarian and i uh monday night at 8 p.m central then uh you can buy the game for five bucks and jump on into my hosted game and we can try it together Ooh, death is one how nice mm-hmm. all right thank you heathen dog 